Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 18. We are on page number 89. Let's get going. On page 89, we'll see, we'll do the three problems that you see there. Page 89, I don't know what page I am on. Yes, three problems that you see there in the second column, beginning with 102. The first two problems are quite straightforward, the last one not so much. So here's the first one. We are told that we have two products, P and Q. We are further told that P is sold for $20 and Q is sold for $17. That's what we get when we sell them. We are also told that we sold twice as many Q as P. The question they are asking is very straightforward. The question is, what is the average revenue per unit? What is the average revenue per unit is a very fancy way of saying what's the average price of the of this of these two products that we sell. I'll give you a second to be able to pause the video, do it yourself. As I said, it's a very straightforward, simple problem. Well, is the weighted average problem in its simplest form. It cannot get any simpler than that because there are only two things we are told that for every one of these that we sell, we sell twice as many of the Q. So if we sell one of this thing, we get $20 for one of them, 1 times 20. And every time we sell one of these, we're going to sell two of the other one, for which we get $17. In other words, in a set of three, the average price is going to look like this. All we have to do is figure out what that is. So that's just 20. That's just 20. Let's do it at the bottom here. And then 2 times 10 is 20 again, and 2 times 7 is 14. So I get 54. 54 divided by 3 is what we're looking for, and that's all it is. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 is going to go away. 5 is made up of 1, 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 4, becomes the 24, and 24 is made up of 8 threes. Looks like the average revenue is $18 for the two products that we sell. Let's do the next one. As I said, it's a very straightforward, very childish problem. 103. 103 on the other hand, the life is going to get quite exciting. If you ever complain that life is boring, nothing exciting is going on, well now you have no cause for complaint because life, is, life as I said, is going to get quite exciting. We're going to carry jugs. Carry, carry is, I'm not sure if carry has two hours or one hour. It should have two hours. Blasted, I should know these things ahead of time. Carry has two hours, obviously. We're going to carry, as I said, jugs from point A to point B. There you go, that is the epitome of excitement. From point A to point B, carry jugs. We're further told that we're going to carry four at a time, four per trip. Presumably two in each hand. What are we going to do with them? Well, we're going to put them in. We're going to put them in cartons. The, exci the excitement keeps building up. We are further told that each carton, each carton, holds. Seven jugs. Here's the question. The question is how many jugs, how many jugs 
are needed for the last for the last partially filled cotton partially filled cotton after 17 trips as you'll see in a second there was a lot of writing a lot of writing in it but this problem also does not have anything at all it's a very childish problem do it yourself pause the video well <coughs> we're going to make 17 trips and after after having made 17 trips the question now is how many more jugs do I need to fill up the last carton that I'm working on, which is presumably partially filled? How many more do I need to put in there to fill that carton? Each carton holds seven jugs. Let's find out. So 17 trips. In each trip, we carry four jugs. Seven fours are 28. Carry two. That's a four and a two. That's six. There you go, 68. Voila, we need two more jugs. We need two more bloody jugs and two more will give us a total of 70 jugs. Two more will give us 70 jugs and that will, care, that will fill up the 10th carton. Apparently we had filled up 9 cartons and we were working on the 10th one. And if we had 10 full cartons we would have had, we would have had 70 jugs. We only had 68. So the last trip bring the two, bring two of them, not four, bring two of them to so fill up the last last carton that you're working on, that's all it is. The answer is two. Like I said in the beginning, there are only three problems in this column. The first two are quite straightforward as I told you. The last one not so. So I'm going to set it up. You're going to pause the video and this time I insist that you do the problem yourself. So here we go. We have a senate. Senate, we are told, is made up of Republicans and Democrats. Republicans and Democrats only. There are no other parties, there are no independents. If you are a senator, if you belong to the Senate, you are either Republican or a Democrat, nothing else. Only. Keep that in mind. And we have two time periods. We are given two time periods, last year and of course this year. And this is what we know. We are told that last year the Senate had 20 more Republicans than Democrats. Last year in the Senate there were 20 more Republicans than there were Democrats. We are also told that this year we have the same total, same total as before, but two fewer Republicans. Same total as before, but two fewer Republicans. Here's the last bit of information. We are told that this year. The Republican represent two thirds of the Senate. I sure hope that you can read this law. I did not check in the camera ahead of time to see if I captured the whole blackboard or not. I hope you can read it. If not, I'm going to read it to you in case you cannot read the bottom part. So let's begin. We have three pieces of information. We are dealing with two time periods or four pieces of information. One first piece of information is that the Senate is made up of Republicans and Democrats and nobody else. You have either one or the other. We are told that last year we had 20 more Republicans than Democrats. This year we have the same number, the same total number of Senators. Total number of Senators has not changed, it's just that we have two fewer Republicans. Same total as before but two fewer Republicans. We are also told, despite the fact that we have two few Republicans, we are also told 
that Republicans represent two-thirds of the Senate, what is known generally as the supermajority. The question is very straightforward. The question is how many total senators? How many how many senators are there in the Senate? Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video. Let's see what we can do, shall we? So, let's start here. We're going to use R, R to represent the number of senators, number of Republic, Republican senators in the Senate last year. You see, algebra is a language. In algebra, each symbol represents a quantity. It represents it, each symbol represents a concept, and you must be very clear as to what the symbol represents. So one more time, what does R represent? R represents the number of senators, number of Republican senators in the Senate last year. This is very important. I'm not going to write everything down. Do you understand? So if that's the case. We are told that we had 20 more. We had 20 more Republicans than Democrats. So if we use B to represent the number of Democratic Senators in the Senate last year, then if you were to add 20 to it, if you were to add 20 to it, these two numbers must be equal. Because that's how many Republicans we have. Republicans are 20 more than the number of Democrats. And we also know the total has to be made up of Republican Senators and the Democratic Senators. So that's all we have. Let's work on this, shall we? And R we know is D plus 20. D plus 20 plus D. So total, it looks like, is 2D plus 20. That is the important part. 2D plus 20. Now let's work on this side. We are told that we have the same total as before, but two fewer Republican. Two fewer Republican. How many Republicans did we have last year? We had R. Now we have two fewer, minus two. How many Democratic Senators did we have last year? D. And since we had two fewer Republicans and the total has not changed, we must have had, we must have two more Democratic Senators. Because the total has not changed, we were told that. So this quantity plus this quantity also has to be equal to Total. Please. Now you might look at it and you might say to yourself, "Oh bloody hell! That doesn't tell us anything, because the two drops out, two drop out, and we end up with total being R plus D, which is exactly what it is, of course." But in about few seconds, in about a few seconds, you will see that without, without this equation, even though this equation is identical to this equation right here even though it is identical because two are going to drop out and you might say what well, bloody purpose does this serve? It doesn't tell us anything but it tells us a lot. In about few seconds you will see that without this equation we will not be able to solve the problem. We would not have been able to solve the problem. Let's carry on, shall we? So that's this part but two fewer Republicans. Two fewer Republicans implies two more Democrats. Let's carry on. Now we're going to work on this part. We are told that this year the Republicans the Republicans this year, and how many Republicans do we have this year? We're talking about this year, right here. How many Re Re Republicans we have this year? R minus 2. And that quantity, this year, the Re Republican represent two-thirds of the Senate. It represents two-thirds of the Senate, which is the T. T for the total number of senators. There we go. Now we have everything we need. Sometimes I tell my clients that solving a math problem, or for that matter any work, solving a math problem is like cooking. You cannot start cooking. A good chef will always tell you that you must have all your ingredients ready to go, right there on the counter. All the ingredients have to be ready before you start cooking. We have our ing ingredients. All we have to do is cook them. That's all. Let's put them together, shall we? Let's, let's, let's get going. So what can we do here? But we have T here, which is this quantity, and we have a T here. Let's solve for T. If 
we solve this equation for t, multiply both sides by 3 over 2. So this 3 is going to end up on the top and 2 is going to end up on the bottom. So we end up with 3 halves times r minus 2 must equal t. There you go. And there is a t right here. t equals 2d plus 20. All we have to do is put them together and solve for d. Let's do them on the top. I need the room. We need the room. Let's put them together. 2d plus 20 must equal this quantity right here. 3 halves times r but putting r here is not going to do anything because we end up with two variables. We're not going to put r here. We're going to replace r we're going to replace r with this quantity right here. You see r equals b plus 20. That's what I mean by having all your ingredients at your disposal. So let's replace this r with this quantity d plus 20. That's what r is equal to. That come from this that came from the story for, for from the last year. So we're going to replace this r with d plus 20. That's your r. That's your r minus 2. Now we are ready. Now we have an equation in terms of one variable d, all we have to solve for d. Once we know how many Democrats we have, we can figure out the total. And total we can figure out either from this equation or that equation. Doesn't matter. But if we went, if we try to use this equation for to find a total, we'll have to again waste more time to figure out the Republicans. So once we find the d, I'm just going to use this equation, put it in here, and solve for the total. Let's get going. Shall we? Enough on the talk. Multiply both sides by 2 so to get rid of this 2. So 2 times 2d plus 20 must equal 3 times d and let's put them combine, put them together so that's a plus 18. All right, I'm going to pick up speed now. We've been going at the speed of a baby. Let's pick up some speed. So that's going to give us 4d. That's going to give us 4ds. That's going to give us 40. 3 times d is 3d and then 3 times 10 is 30 and 3 times 8 is 24. I hope you are able to see what I was doing. Okay? Because you see this 18 is made up of 10 and 8. 3 times 3 times 10 is 30 and 3 times 8 is 24. Oh, that's 4D and this is 3D. So D is equal to simply this quantity, 30 plus 24 minus this quantity because it's going to come on the other side. And that tells us so, this is a positive 30, this is a negative 40, I'm going to get rid of this and make it a negative 10. There you go, positive 24 and negative 10, this gives us 14. Let me erase this thing, this is looking very ugly. I just want to save this equation. That's it. We have 14 Democrats, and this equation right here tells us the total has to equal 2 times d, 2 times d which is 14, plus 20. It comes straight from here. 2 times d, 2 times 14 is 28, 28 plus 2, 28 plus 20. We have apparently 48 senators in this particular senate. Unlike our senate, which has, as you know, 100 senators, two for each state. That was the end of the show. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.